Mellow TV. Everywhere. Good afternoon and welcome to a Mellow TV Sports Special. My name is Christopher Scott and today we have via Skype a defender from IK Start, the Norway top flight and also defender of the Reggae Boys, Damien Nanalo. Welcome Damien. Actually, the first like, report I ever called me Nana. But um, it's good vibes. Um, <laughs> thanks for having me. Yes, you, I've done some research. I've done some research. I, I didn't want to associate yeah. yourself with your father. But uh, we want to start with IK Start. Uh, Norway League, the top flight Norway League, you guys have been promoted there. And there was a specific match that was exciting. 4-3 it ended, but you guys went through on away goals. Talk to me about being promoted to the top flight in Norway. I mean, it's a good feeling, you know, in any, in any league at all. You know, once you get, you know, to go up in the top league, it, it, it shows improvement, it shows um, growth, you know, it shows success. So I'm grateful for that. Um, obviously, you know, we've been um, relegated the, the season prior. So it's a great joy to know that a young couple of um, uh, players can, um, you know, get back up to the top flight. Uh, All right, so come. it has been announced that you guys are starting the season in June, on June 16, to be specific. How ready are you guys to start the season? Um, you know, obviously, everyone is kind of um, on a setback because of the whole um, COVID-19 situation. But, you know, it was up to us to be good professionals and, you know, to do the extra training when it's needed. Um, especially during this time, you know, it's hard for players to really prepare the way they want. So I can imagine every team and every player is kind of not where they want to be. But, um, you know, we have the foundation. Obviously, we were training for three months prior to this. So, you know, all is not lost, but um, there, there's room for it to just work again and prepare for June 16th. All right. And training starts this week, correct? Yes, training started uh, actually today. How how are you guys getting mentally prepared as well? Because it's not only physical fitness, but it's mental fitness to start the season, especially being a club that has been promoted. So talk to us about the mental readiness that you are getting yourself into to take the pitch on June 16. I mean, I know it's all, it's a joy to know that there is football again, you know, because it's very tough when you're used to doing something on a regular basis, then it's just, you know, stagnant all of a sudden. Um, and then knowing that, you know, we're a young team, you know, a lot of people doubted us, you know, coming up, getting pro to get promoted and everything because, you know, we had gotten relegated the season before. But um, we just have to stick together and believe in each other and believe in the, the, the team's philosophy and, you know, and just, just do the right things, you know, be good professionals, prepare well. Um, you know, as I said, football is a mental game and, you know, you have to stay focused for 100% of the time. You know, in order to be successful, but um, we're all humans, you know, and everyone prepared differently. But you know, we just have to start from the training pitch and, and, and get the job done. Okay, you spoke about belief. I want to switch to the reggae boys for a bit. You're the defender of the reggae boys, and the first time I watched you live was actually the gold cup, the first game of the gold cup for the reggae boys last year when you guys won 3 2 against Honduras. As a matter of fact, we saw your yeah. dancing skills and your goal-scoring prowess in that game, you scored in that game <laughs> against Honduras. Now, the belief yeah. around this team comprises of Leon Bailey, Peter Lee Vassell, Javon Watson, Kemar Tatiman Lawrence, Alvas Powell, Andre Blake. What is the belief within the camp, as well as the fans, that you guys can qualify for the 2022 World Cup in Qatar? I feel like, you know, um, all eyes are on us right now. I feel like the fans do believe it's been a long time that we've gotten a buzz around the national team where, okay, you actually can do this. Um, when it comes to internally, you know, the guys believe, you know, um, since, you know, the, the program restarted and re got rejuvenated back in 2016, um, you know, it, 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 it was... It, it's been a good uh, vibe, you know. The guys are focused. The guys know what's at, at the, the task at hand and what 
what's needed to, to, to get to the hexagonal round and what's needed to qualify for the World Cup. Um, obviously, we're still in the preparations um, stage. Um, no pressure, you know. Obviously, you know, at the big, biggest level and stage, there's always pressure. But, you know, we just need the support from the fans, you know, and also the federation, you know, just to believe in us. Um, and I'm positive and confident that they believe in us. Um, the players believe in themselves and in, in each other. So when the, you know, this, basically when the world get, gets healthy again, um, we just have to focus on the, the international friendly games, prepare well, and then, you know, when the hexagonal round comes around, we just have to take it one game at a time. Yes, the heads are gone all around, and I'm glad you mentioned that. Now, the CONCACAF president has said that he will be changing the format. Do you think that is going to disrupt the flow within the reggae boys camp? Because persons have started to believe more and more every matches you guys have played. Do you think that's going to maybe disrupt the chemistry or disrupt the mentality of the team? Um, no, because, you know, it, it doesn't matter. It's football, you know, and it, it's like the Gold Cup, you can say, because what we play maybe every other day in the Gold Cup tournament. And no, obviously, I I, I, I just found that out today because I wasn't really paying much attention um, to that. But um, I noticed that we're going to have more international games or more qualification games. But it's the same teams we're playing against, just like the Gold Cup. And we've showed dominance in the Gold Cup, so why not in this, you know, obviously the World Cup qualification um stage means more than the gold cup but it's the same it's the same uh, mentality that you have to go in you know you have to win and advance and you know um so it's just up to basically the fatigue and the, you know the mental toughness when it comes to playing three or four games in 10 days but um i guess they know they're the authorities i mean they they're, they're gonna organize everything um within the fairness of everybody and you know we just have to look at the schedule and see how well we can um, prepare for this. All right. So I know that COVID-19 has disrupted a lot of the international friendlies. As you have said before, there's going to be more. Has your father even given you some advice? Because I know in previous interviews, you said that he has been much of a bantamate with you. Um, most persons yeah. would say that their fathers who have been in the sport have been more of an advisor rather than a bantamate. But talk to me about how the support has been from your father since the day you stepped into the Reggae Boys camp. It has been good. I mean, you know, he has taught me a lot. And I've, you know, I've been, basically, I've been a Reggae Boy since I was a baby because I'm, you know, all the past players and stuff, basically my uncles, you know, I've been, they come to my house, you know, on the weekends or like I'd go to the players' house, you know, when my father would come in for national team duties. You know, I'd go to their houses, hang out with their kids and stuff. So being around the national program and everything, you know, um, and with my father, it's, you know, I've learned a lot, you know, and I remember a lot of stuff. So when I, it's my turn now to be, you know, a senior reggae boy and thing, you know, it was pretty straightforward. You know, I already knew the whole technical staff, the people who work at the players' house. I know everybody who work in the offices and stuff, the coaches. So it was easy for me to, to settle in. Um, it's not much, you know, it's football. It's just like being in your club just at the national level, you know. You just have to to, to, to carry yourself as a good professional and respect, be respectable of authority um, and just play well, you know. Everybody, it's not like, you know, there's uh, three, four guys coming in that want to represent the country in your position. So you just have to come in and not, because Anandi Lowe is your father, you know, you're going like, to sit back and, and be comfortable and, and not work for your game. So it's just stuff like that, you know. It just can't be basically... Um, you can't you can't take your foot out of the gas basically. You know, it's high voltage all the time because everybody wants to don the, the national team colours. Um with my father, when it comes to my father, he's very supportive, you know, not because I say oh yeah, he's you know uh he, he, he does a lot of banter, but um he's very supportive of my career, you know, um but I like you know when he gives me a hard time because then that drives me and that pushes me and then that builds the relationship more between me and him. All right, so do you believe that you had to work harder being as though you are Anandilo's son and persons normally associated with that? Do you believe that you had to work harder to prove yourself? Yes, I believe so, you know, since I was a kid because most times when people see my success, they think like, yeah, it's because of my father. 
father's name. That's why I'm, I'm where I'm at. So I had to work extra hard to show people consistency, to show people that I'm just not a one-hit thing or like, yeah, I have links with the coach or whatever because people respect my father and the last name. They're going to give me an opportunity. Yes, I can say my last name and my father's history and what he has done has opened doors for me and has, you know, made things, you can say, more more um you can say accessible to me but when i get there it's what i have to do for myself you know that matters and um i feel i feel like even now during my career you know even though i've been one of the best in concacaf being one of the best in in my club you know um i still have to prove myself day in day out and you know i appreciate that you know i appreciate the challenge i appreciate the journey and um you know, for me, proving myself is not an issue. All right. What's the vibe or the energy between the players in the Reggae Boys camp, knowing that they have work to do in, in qualifying for the 2022 World Cup in Qatar? I mean, you know, there's a level of seriousness. The players from day one, as I said, you know, from we, from we went to the, 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 that this group of players, you know, made the transition into the Cena setup and you know, with also the likes of Faka Taxi, Blakey, you know, Prano, you know, the more senior guys, you know, over me. Um, you know, it's been just work mode, you know, this is the goal, this is the dream. Um, obviously, it's all fun, you know, you have to enjoy the football, you know, so every time we link up at the camp or like we talk on a daily basis, it's just all fun and, you know, enjoying, you know, the sport and, you know, just enjoying each other's company because the brotherhood is very important. You know when it comes to this stuff and you know we have to be a family and you know we can get we can overcome anything once once we're a family and that's the dream and the plan okay lastly what do you feel you guys need to do to get to the top or to qualify for the world cup i mean right now i feel like just continue doing what we've do, been doing i mean we don't lose a lot of games we've we, we've been performing well over the past what six years um just just work harder and believe in ourselves and stay disciplined remain disciplined and remain grounded you know not because of, we have good results and we've been to finals three times in a row and stuff like that and you know four semi-finals it means that yeah we're, we've arrived no we still we're still ranked what fourth in CONCACAF we want to get to number one and we have the capabilities of doing that because if you look at the Mexico's and the U.S. the Costa Rica as you can say we're not far off you know we were either there or we're close to beating them and we've beaten them before we've shown it we've shown the qualities that we portray so um it's just a level of consistency and like you know just basically um getting over that hurdle of, of, of qualifying for the world cup thank you so much damian it's been a pleasure talking to you all right thank you thanks for having me okay Okay, so this has been a Mellow TV presentation, Mellow TV Sports presentation with the man defender of IK Start and the Reggae Boys, Damien Nanalo. Mellow TV, everywhere.